All right, gang. Attempted a video number two for this week. I was hoping to get you a video of Parachute Mobile because I made a couple of jumps. Made one on Friday and I made one on Sunday. So Friday the 10th of September and Sunday the 12th of September. And dummy right here wiped out his SD cards by mistake. So I don't have any of that video. So this is a video I was hoping to put together over winter. We're gonna do it now. What we're doing today is we're gonna build a coaxial collinear, a cocoa antenna. And you're gonna say, what in the world is that? Well, you make an antenna out of coaxial cable. I have crap coaxial cable here, and it's gonna be a collinear antenna. And uh, the purpose of these antennas that I'm gonna build, I'm gonna build two, I'm gonna show you how to build one of the two, uh, is for a kit that I'm gonna build to track my position in the sky a little bit better. Uh, one is going to be for ADS-B to receive uh, the beacon of the airplane I'm in and the other one's going to be to monitor a channel that I'm going to use to relay my sound from my parachute mobile radio down to the ground in a cross mode, on a cross band repeat uh, that I'm setting up on a second radio. So I'm going to have an output out of the primary radio going to the input of the secondary radio and the secondary radio is going to be set to transmit that to the ground using Vox. Uh, and then on the ground I'm going to use that to record the content of the audio from Parachute Mobile HF. So if you don't have any of this around, let me tell you, uh, you can find coax, 75 ohm coax, real cheap, lots of places. Uh, I happen to have a bunch of it from uh, search suppressors that come with it. I also picked up a spool of it at the local Habitat for Humanity Restore. For 10 bucks, I picked up like 300 feet of it. So, uh, antenna I'm going to show you today is going to be the ADSB antenna. Then we're going to test it and see how well it does in comparison to a normal stub antenna that comes with the uh, SDR that I buy. And uh, later on, hopefully this winter, I'll build a box with. The, you know this antenna, the other antenna, and a couple SDRs to one to do ADS-B, the other one to record two meters. So let's go down the road and build this puppy up. Okay, so I've already done the math on this uh, on a website. I'll link the website on the description of the video below. But basically, we're going to start with a 1080 uh, uh, antenna, 10 uh, 1080 megahertz for ADS-B. Uh, what we're going to use is some coaxial cable, 75 ohm, uh, and a couple of tools to cut it and to strip it. Uh, if you are like me, then you have some tools that you probably shouldn't, you know, that don't really need, but so for example, I have uh, one of these uh, nice micrometers or calipers, I should say, and I've already dialed in the distance I need. Uh, I need uh, 116 millimeters of um, cable to do this with. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna move that aside, Let's cut this puppy down. And it happens that the folds on this coax happen to be just right to make the antenna I want because the straights are already uh, straightened out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this into sections that then I'm going to use later as the components of the antenna and uh, I'll show you how to make one or two and then we'll use the magic of editing to skip the, all the boring parts to get to the actual buildup of the antenna. So here we have a length of coax, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a marker. Find a marker real quick. Okay, I'm gonna take a marker and mark the uh, edges of uh, the length of the coax that I need, and you'll see how this builds out in a minute. So you'll see that I have some overhang, and that overhang is on purpose. Uh, Couple of easy marks. I'm gonna do this to all the sections, but now that I have a mark, 
Of course, I'm going to clean up my calipers because I don't like that crab on my calipers. So once you make your first one, the rest you can use your first one as a, as a guide or you can just keep using the calipers or the ruler or the uh, tape measure, whatever it is you're using. But the next thing I'm going to do is strip uh, the shield from this. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to use these uh, wire strippers to score the... Uh, the, uh, the jacket and the shield and after the jacket is done I'm gonna have to close them up a little bit and just keep rolling it and we're gonna keep doing this until we get to the core without actually killing the core out and there we go right so there's one section off let's do the same thing to the other side and keep in mind that these are receive only antennas uh, at least that's my intention with them. So I don't have to worry about the SWR terribly. I don't have to worry about the feet, uh, point impedance terribly. Uh, as long as the SDRs receive well enough, then well enough, right? I don't have to nail this at 50 ohms, and I certainly don't have to nail this at uh, the proper exact lengths. I have to just be in the ballpark. So here's section one. Uh, we're going to verify it with the calipers that it fits inside of my calipers and is close enough for government work at 116 millimeters and that's the wavelength, the length for that I need for uh, 1090 accounting for the velocity factor of the wire. Let's do one more. And I can hear you guys, uh, guys and gals already saying you're leaving this bit out, you can use it. Yeah, I probably can. Just don't wanna deal with straightening it out. So hey, you do you. I'm gonna do what I need to do. Let's get this antenna built. So back to, well, we were used to the calipers once, so let's use the uh, the original stub, the, the my, my uh, primary as the gauge for everything else. That's another way of doing it, right? Build the first one and don't worry about the calipers for the rest. Another way of doing it would be, um, let's see, uh, using a ruler. So again, I don't have a ruler handy right now, otherwise I would just use a ruler to mark 116 millimeters of length. And Yeah, it didn't cut all the uh, shield wire on it. Once the shield wire is cut, the, uh, the foam core pretty much goes with it. That's not a big deal. Let's do the other side now. You get the idea, right? We're going to make... I'm going to make a, eight of these total, and then I'll come back for the assembly of this thing. Okay, so I have my sections cut and ready. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all these and test that we have continuity from one end to the other on the center and that there's no uh, connectivity to the shield from the center so to make sure that there's no strangled wire or no, no extra wires that got twisted and ended up on the, on the shield by mistake or on the center from the shield by mistake. I already caught one. So, and of course, when I caught it, I didn't have the camera running. Let's see if we have any more. The centers are what really matters to me because I know the shields are probably going to have a good connection since there's so many of those little wires in there. Plus, there's also uh, this, uh, this coax that I have here not only has the uh, shield wires, but it also has a shield foil. So, you know, continuity-wise, there should be perfect continuity all the way through and then okay so we have our uh, components ready now it's time to assemble okay so it's time to start building and what we're gonna do is let's set that one aside for now we're gonna take uh, one of these sections and we're gonna poke the center conductor through a piece of electrical tape. We're just using that to make sure that there's a shield between the uh, center and the outside because we're about to butt up two pieces, right? 
So you don't know that, but I know that. So this is a really difficult part. Not terribly difficult, but it's difficult enough that it's kind of a pain to let's move that out of the way there and put the center conductor of the other one through. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to drive the center conductor on the one on my left into the shield on the one on my right, and then the center conductor on the one on my right into the shield on the one on my left. So carefully there. I'll do what I just did, which is almost stab myself with the wire. And I may have left this uh, lead a little too long, but... Anyhow, we're going to keep doing... Yeah, we're going to do that until... Yeah, there we go. They poked out on either side. I'm just going to take uh, these uh, cutters and cut them flush. As long as they are electrically correct, that's all that I really care about. All right, so I can use a little piece of uh, electrical tape there to insulate where I uh, just cut through on the shield. Again, I'm not using this to transmit, I'm only using this to receive, so a, uh, yet another point where I'm not terribly worried about the exact quality of the antenna. Good enough is good enough, right? I don't have to worry about. And now that the two sections are joined, I should have continuity from the center to the shield and then from the center to the shield. So let's test that. And with every section that we join, we need to make that test happen, right? So, so center to center should be nothing. And then center to center to shield works and then Let's go the other side, center to shield. Cool. So we have two sections out of eight. We're gonna do this for all eight sections and then we're gonna come back and get this connected to an SDR. So here's an important uh, learning point, at least for me, and you know, it reinforces why I need to test every section as I go along. Uh, I am at one, two, three, four, five sections with means uh, that I should go center to center conductivity and there it is no problem right but it also means that I need to check the shield so shield to shield should have conductivity and it doesn't right and I've been testing with all these sections so far this is the first section that's done it what I suspect is that when I mated these up that I went straight into yep just uh easy to spot here uh, I don't know if it'll be easy to see in the video there or perhaps uh, there but I went into the uh, foam right so there's not gonna be any contact on the shield so I'm gonna readjust my uh, aim here and do this section again and if this fails one more time I'm just gonna cut a whole new section of coax I have plenty of coax uh, let me trim this down a little bit so it's not so much to deal with. But I should be able to pop that puppy there and then okay. Okay. It looks like we're getting a a good section now let's test it one more time just to be on the safe side here so this should be center to center okay and then there should be nothing on the shield and then shield to shield cool that works so test all your sections as you're assembling this because you might run into what I just ran into and then at the end of the antenna you're trying to figure out what's wrong all right, so I have my sections put together. I'm using an eight section antenna for this. You can see that I have a little bit of a wire poked out there, no big deal. I'm just gonna trim it. 
and uh, uh, you should probably use safety squints when you do that. I didn't, and I just felt that thing whiz by me, so be careful. And then we have all these bits of insulating, you know, what do you call it, electrical tape insulating. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to, A, any place where I trimmed uh, wire sticking out of the jacket, I'm going to put a piece of uh, uh, electrical tape on. And then at all these junctions, I'm going to put a piece of electrical tape. This electrical tape at the junctions is not critical for me because this is going to be fed inside of a piece of PVC. So it is going to have weather protection, but you know what, you know, I have the, I'm building it now. I have electrical tape with me. So why not simply put a little bit of it on there and uh, make sure that this has a decent uh, chance at surviving, you know, a little bit of moisture. I mean, this is going to be going inside of an Apache type box or a, what do you call it? A Gator or Pelican or whatever you call it. Whichever one I can get my hands on cheapest, which will probably be an Apache. Uh, and it's only going to go out in the field with me when I'm doing parachute mobile work. So, so it shouldn't be in the elements. And protecting it from the elements shouldn't be a you know, big deal, but... You know what if I'm gonna do this let's just do it right all right so the antenna quote-unquote part of it is done right but we're feeding it uh, what are these called an F type connectors if I, if I remember right these are called F I could be wrong if I'm wrong I'll just put it in the subtitles uh, so what we need next is uh, Amazon magic all the way from the People's Republic, an Amazon package that lets me take this connector and turn it into SMA uh, female in this case. And I got to double check my SDR. But I'm pretty sure that's what I need. Actually, you know what I need? I know exactly what I need. Hey, tell you what, I bought this cable to connect it. Again, another Amazon comes to save you so yep that's a female and that's a male that means the other side is also uh what i need for the sdr so let's get all this connected and uh, see what we get as you might expect i already have an adsb receiver at my house i actually have three of them uh, so this is my test unit and my test unit uses the standard sdr antenna the one that comes with the sdr when you buy it and you can see that it does a decent job, right? Uh, it's picking up 20 aircraft, uh, 18 with position. It's doing, call it 60 some odd some messages per second. I'm going to go outside and switch the antenna on this to uh, my newly built 1090 uh, or 1080 coax. Uh, 1090 co co coco, coaxial collinear. And let's see if it does any better. So a couple of minutes have elapsed since I shot the other video and all I've done is change the antenna so I went from the stock antenna which I used the, the short version of it the stubby because it matches close to the length that we need for a quarter wavelength uh, and you can see that there's a massive difference uh, we have a lot more aircraft and more aircraft with positions and the rate of messages per second has more than tripled was quadrupled am I doing that right yeah at least quadrupled so clearly there's something to having this antenna so i'm going to make a uh, one just like it for two meters and i'm going to build a box and uh have it ready for me to go places other than my home drop zone so i don't need this on my home drop zone my home drop zone has an aircraft tracker you guys already know about that this one is going to be the one that i take with me when i go to events uh, in case they don't have an aircraft tracker in place, I can bring my own and that way you guys can track when I'm getting out of the aircraft uh, and start working uh, parachute mobile. How about that for an easy antenna build? Uh, got the bits from my local restore. You can see that uh, here's the spool of cable uh, in addition to the other stuff I had already in my stash. I'm going to be making the two meter version with this stuff, of course. 
and you can see that I paid five bucks for the thing. Five bucks, and there's got to be, I don't know, a couple hundred feet of RG6 uh, on here. So, decent deal for a cheap antenna, right? Uh, here is the final product, right, for now. Uh, I fixed it on the side with some uh, tubular webbing, screwed into the case, uh, put a little silicone on the uh, uh, screw, screw itself to make sure that it seals up. Again, I don't expect it to be in inclement weather, although you can see that it's wet because it's raining outside today and I was testing it. Uh, it's just a Raspberry Pi inside. Right now it only has one SDR. Uh, soon it'll have two because, like I said, I'm making another antenna for two meters. So I'm going to be putting another uh, SDR and antenna on this side so that I can track the airplane with one and feed it to the internet for you guys and gals and then uh, record what I relay down to the ground on an SDR on this side, on the other side, if you will, so that I have a better recording of what I hear up there on the ground. Uh, so far, my recording methods up top on HF have been less than reliable. So I got to come up with something, and this is something to try. Not sure it's going to be the, the golden ticket, but I got to try it. No, no more than it's going to cost me. Anyhow, uh, links to the antenna build and the calculator that I use and all that happy-go-lucky are going to be down in the doobly-doo. And uh, links to the SDRs that I'm using and the adapters and the cables and all that other stuff will also be down in the doobly-doo. They are affiliate links, so know that, yeah, you know, Amazon is going to throw me a penny or two if you end up buying something from them. Uh, if you do watch and if you don't, it's okay. You know. Uh, I got to figure out a way of uh, making this channel pay for itself somehow. That's all I got for tonight. Uh, see y'all hopefully in the sky this weekend.